AP exams, and more specifically the AP Biology exam, are just around the corner. And as somebody who scored a 5 on the AP Biology exam without even taking the class, I thought it would be helpful to give a few pointers to those who might have one or two days to study for the exam, and even to those who have a little bit longer, maybe a few months to even an academic year to prepare for the AP Biology test. I think it's important to preface this video with a kind of a disclaimer. The first thing is that, in the end, the AP Biology exam is just that, an exam. It's not the end of the world if you're not able to pass, and that it has really no bearing on your academic career, even if you are interested in biology. That being said, let's get into a few tips, and I'll try to make this video as short as possible. First, starting off with those students who have maybe one or two days left before the exam, who are trying to get their last final grasp, or don't really think that they're at their level that they want to be at for this exam, I think the most important thing is to try to get free points on the test. The AP Biology exam is structured so that it doesn't only test biology, but also your understanding of graphs and charts. Graphs and charts. As well as images and tables. These are some of the easiest questions on the exam. I would even dare go to say that you don't even need to have biology knowledge in order to interpret these graphs, charts, images, and tables. Be very comfortable with error bars and what you can infer and extrapolate from data because they'll really try and catch you, especially on multiple choice, when it comes to the formatting of their wording to make their answers just a little bit wrong to where it's not the correct choice. Free points make up almost 15 to 20% of the exam, in my opinion. And when I took the exam, a lot of these free points were also on the FRQ portion, which makes up a substantial portion of your overall score. So focusing on data analysis is a good way to go if you only have one to two days left to study before the exam. Second, and this is pretty general advice, is to just focus on high impact areas. Not every unit in the AP Biology exam is tested the exact same, at the exact same rate. For example, natural selection, natural selection is tested around 15% to 20% of the exam, which is much higher than unit one, the chemistry of life. To, just to list all the sections out there, natural selection, gene expression and regulation, uh, cell energetics, and the cell cycle are some of the most tested on units. But of course, go to the College Board uh, website in order to get the exact percentages. Lastly, I would say, if you have just one to two days and you need to click off this video quickly, is to try to game the exam. And by doing so, I mean, um, when I say this, I mean do practice problems. Do practice problems. The AP exam is one of the easiest exams to gamify because a lot of their problems are structured in the exact same way as previous tests. By doing practice problems, by doing released previous tests, you're able to sort of pattern match questions that you can find. More specifically, Topics like the TRP and LAC Operon come up quite often when it comes to multiple choice and FRQ questions, particularly prevalent on the FRQ. Along with this does come understanding keywords. Understanding keywords. Most importantly, know the difference between things like identify and describe. And when it comes to compare and contrast, don't just start listing out the explanation of an organelle. Understanding keywords is pretty important, and the College Board does have a structure for how to answer certain keywords, compare and contrast versus describe versus identify. These are the last sort of points that you can get, and even if you sort of don't get the problem fully right, at least you'll get some partial credit if you're able to understand the keywords and what they're going for. Now, moving on to sort of the longer game plan for students who have a little bit more time, I would say that this next technique almost guarantees you a four, I think, really a five, and that's the concept of overstudying. When I say that I took the AP Biology exam without taking a course, that was sort of a misnomer, because at the same time that I decided to sign up for the AP Biology course, I was studying for the USA Biology Olympiad, which is an Olympiad and sort of test that is much more complex than the AP Biology exam for high schoolers. Thus, when studying for the USA Biology Olympiad, the concepts in AP Biology were so low level compared to the things that I had to know for the exam that they almost seemed like it was very easy. In fact, when I took the exam in 2021, the exam seemed like quite a breeze because I had just gone into such more complex topic than what the exam tested on. 
Of course, you don't have to go in detail as I did, as I did it for an entire competition. But the textbook I did use for this was Campbell's Biology. Campbell's Biology. I believe at the time of recording, the most recent edition is the 12th edition with the purple flower on the cover. But really, any edition is fine. And you most likely will find this in your biology teacher's classroom or even your high school library. That being said, while I did read the entirety of the book for the USA Biology Olympiad, only around one third of the book is actually relevant to the AP Biology exam. But if you're trying to knock out two birds with one stone, if you're taking the AP Biology exam and decide to do this overstudying sort of trick, might as well take the Biology Olympiad with it. That sort of brings me to the next point, is that if you're planning to do this concept of overstudying and trying to really go in depth as much as possible to guarantee yourself a really high score, might as well combine it with other things. Join the Science Olympiad team, join the Science Bowl team, take the Biology Olympiad. That way you can t use the same time to study and work on multiple things. Overall, I'd say that overstudying probably guaranteed me my five more than anything else on this list because the exam just felt super easy. Campbell's biology goes into such depth, it's almost like learning addition by going through calculus. Addition is such a fundamental concept that it comes naturally when you explore such deeper concepts. We can think of it sort of like your math class, except now we're sort of extrapolating it to biology. And lastly, a small little tip for anybody who might want to sort of implicitly taken uh, knowledge sort of while you're scrolling through social media is that I try to gamify my social media in the same way I try to gamify the exam. Around the time when I was taking my AP exams, I followed educational accounts on Instagram, TikTok, etc. And I followed accounts which uh, gave practice problems in AP biology. So while I was scrolling through social media, every 10th post was an AP biology question or was an AP physics question. That way, even when I was scrolling through social media, sort of quote unquote, wasting my time, my brain was still in that mode where every now and then I'd be able to practice. And this spaced out my practice pretty well. If I didn't understand a question, I'd go to the comments and understand the answer or in the post, there's also answers themselves, but it was good review. So by going through Instagram, social media, and following accounts, it doesn't even need to be permanently following them. Following them around the time that the exam is coming up, you have that review over and over again, even in times where you're not actively studying, which is sort of one of the best tips that I found to have that sort of knowledge diffuse into what I was doing. Overall, these are a few tips that uh, I had when it came to the AP Biology exam. I hope that you guys knocked the exam out of the park, and best of luck.